Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I will be guiding us through how to make buttons. Firstly, the simple way using frames, and then the more complex way using auto layouts. For this exercise, I've downloaded two icons just from Material Icons by Google. If you haven't checked out their resource yet, they have a bunch of icons you can download and a lot of resources on UX UI design. I'll leave the link in my description below. I've also set up two rectangles with the color swatches I will be using. So let's get into it. The first button type I want to demonstrate is by making it out of frames. And you just want to go over here to the top using the frame tool shortcut F and just clicking onto the workspace. So by making a button out of a frame, essentially what you're trying to get is probably trying to create buttons of consistent sizes. So by using the frame, we can just set out our template to which we will create all our buttons. So for the width, I'm going to just type in 128 and the height 48. Let's just zoom in a bit. So I'm just holding down command and scrolling. I'm going to add some text. Add to cut. I'm just using the font type aileron bold with a font size of 16. So by default, you have the line height at auto and we don't want it to be at auto. Um, why is that? So auto normally adds additional spacing um, to the top and bottom, which the typeface designer has added. So when you have multi-line text, it has a nice spacing. But because most of our buttons have single line, we don't want it to be auto. And the reason being is my font size is 16, but the height of the text field is 19. So it might be just hard to play with. So instead, we can just type in 100%. You can also see the 19 just indicates what it's become. So 100%. And now we can see the height is 16. This will make it easier for us to place it into the middle. So we can just use those guides. Let's try to find those guides. Uh, there we go. We can also use these align tools, align horizontal centers and align vertical centers in our properties panel. They do the same thing. They just bring it into the center of our frame. And also with this frame, we want rounded corners. So we can just make it four pixels and not all buttons need to have rounded corners, but if you do want it to have it rounded, you can do that. Now that we have our button design set up, we are going to make a component. So we're going to click on our frame, right click, create component. And the shortcut is option command K. And you know it's a component when it has a purple border when it's selected. And we're just going to go ahead and create some copies. So I'm just holding down the option key and click dragging. So with components, we always have one main component, which is the one that you've made create component with. And then you have your copies, which are instances. And you can tell by the layers panel with the main component having four filled purple diamonds and our instances having one hollow diamond. So I can also right click on any instance, go to main component and Figma will just direct me to that main component. What is the power of components? If I create any changes with my components, it will push them through. So for example, if I change it to say yes, it's gonna push them all through. However, once I've overwritten a property in my instance, it will no longer push that single property through. So for example, I can change this to be test. Now, if I make this no, see how this one didn't change, but this one still changed. And if you want to bring it back, you can just right click, reset all overrides. And, and the keyword here is all. So you don't just reset one, which is a bit annoying, but you reset them all, but you can easily just bring it back. So what is the power of components? If I wrote buy it now, add to cart. Besides changing the text, if I wanted to make any other changes to my components, it will be now very easy to do so. A good example is if I wanted to change the color of my text, I can just make it this orange. 
and I just noticed I didn't even spell it correctly. So let me just go ahead and fix that. Very easy. Now that we're back at our starting point, we want to just make sure the text is flexing correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it twice. So what I'm doing is holding option again, click drag. I'm just going to make this button really big. And then I'm just going to, for this one, I'm just going to drag it to make it wider. So just to explain it, um, we always want the button to be in the middle. So for this one, we want to make sure, because it's currently in the center, we want to make sure the constraints are in the center. So right now it's on left and top, indicated by these drop down fields. So you can just use this um, handy tool to just click on the center. And now it jumps into the center. That's perfect. So you can see it's in the center of this one and the center of this one. But also if I make the text smaller, so for example, it was add to cut, now it's buy. You can see it's no longer in the center, which is not what we want. We always want it to be in the center. So one, we're going to make this center center, but we also need it to be in the middle. So now we have it in the middle. We've got to just make sure our main component is um, set up correctly. So we're just going to drag this one back in the middle. You can also just use these align tools. So now if I change it to add to cut, they will both be in the middle, no matter what the button size is. So just to reiterate, the things that we need to change is in constraints, make sure we pick center center, and we also have text align center. Now that we've made our first frame icon, we got to make our second frame icon using an icon and text. So Let's just zoom in actually. We'll just use the frame tool again. I'll try and make it the same size. Let's go one to eight by height 48, round corners four. I'm zooming out. I'm just going to duplicate this icon component that I've made and using the text add to cart. Oops zooming too crazy. So just make sure your line height is at 100%. So I know a lot of people probably just do this. We'll just do the same thing. Try to get it to the middle. Maybe we just group it. Maybe some people do that. Um, I'm going to go center, center for my constraints. So let's make this a component and see what happens. I'm just going to duplicate it. And that works perfectly. Now that we've made our frame buttons, I will demonstrate how we can make order layout buttons and why this might be useful uh, for you. I'm going to copy these icons holding down the option clip, option key. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to add some text, add to cart. So we're going to check our line height. So we have it at 100% and which makes the height 16 of the text field. So with our icon, we can do the same thing. I'm just going to constrain proportions and make the height 16. So we can turn it into an order layout by right clicking all our elements and go add order layout, shortcut shift A. And so what we're going to do is for the spacing between items, we want to make it eight pixels. And just going through the other um, features, horizontal direction just means our elements stack left to right instead of vertical. And we're going to add some padding. So this is for uniform padding. Padding. So if I type in 16 here, it just adds 16 around all my elements. But we want to add more on the side. So essentially what we want to do is add 32 to the left on the right. So one of the downsides about auto layouts is when you click on the element, you're not clicking on the auto layout, you're clicking on the element within the auto layout. Um, and also, you know, something is an auto layout when it has the two rectangles. So the easiest way to select it is just clicking on the title like we would a frame. 
um, or you can use the, the navigation um, tool to go through the layers panel, which is return to go to your child. So clicking on frame, if I type in, not type, if I press return, it goes down a layer to my child. And if I want to go back to my order layer, I go shift return to go to my parent. So clicking on the title frame 13, I'm just going to add a fill, which is the default white. And for rounded corners, we're going to make it four. So why would you make a order layer button? So let's demonstrate this by making this a component first. One of the benefits is when you change um, the text to be whatever, the padding just reduces to match um, the length of your text, which can be good and bad. Um, most of the times you do want your buttons to be the same size just to have consistency in the UI design, but we can work around that. So the way we work around that is we're going to duplicate this twice and do the same thing. I'm going to make this extra big. Essentially what we can do is, so when you're editing um, how elements work in the order layer, you generally don't click on the elements. You just click on the order layer itself. So I want to make sure I'm not clicking on these individual elements. So in this panel, we want it to be in the center. And there we have it. I can also reset the size, which just resets it back to my padding that I've set out. But if for, ever, for whatever reason, I wanted to have a small button that says buy, I can just stretch it out. Or if I wanted to get rid of the icon, it readjusts to be in the middle, which is super handy. And obviously, if I wanted to go back to have a smaller button, um, for whatever reason, I can just reset all the overrides. But it goes back to what it was, actually. That's not that great. Let's see that again. There we go. We have that small button that we needed. Now that we've learned how to make our frame buttons and auto layout buttons, I will demonstrate how we can make primary and secondary styling using color as our differentiator. So I'm going to demonstrate this with the order layout button that we created just then. But with this technique, you can use our frame buttons as well. I'm just going to quickly copy these four times using the option key, holding down and then left click dragging. So we've got our four buttons. On the top row, I'm going to make two primary buttons and then the bottom two secondary buttons. So firstly, I want to delete this icon and I'm just going to write by it now, Ooh, maybe lowercase. Uh, maybe I just delete this and copy it so I can do it a bit quicker. So this button on the left, we have 174 for the width. So we want to make this one the same and it's currently grayed out. So we can just stretch it a bit to unlock it. And then we can write 174. So we'll select our top row and we will make our primary styling using the darker background color. And instead of coloring each element one at a time, we can use the neat selection colors. So selection color works by Figma outlining every color out of the selection we've, we've picked out. And so for example, we have the black and the white. So when I click on the black, what I am essentially doing is saying to Figma, everything black in my selection, I want to change it to something else. So for the black, I'm going to make it this gray. And for this white, I'm going to make it this blue. That's our primary styling done. And for the bottom, we're just going to do the same thing, but the opposite. So for the black, we're going to make it the blue. And for the white, we're going to make it the gray. We might also want to add a stroke around the border. So I'm going to click on my two bottom ones and click on stroke. There we have it. You can also just change the color in your stroke property. But as you can see in our selection colors, we now have the blue, the black, and the gray. 
So I'm just going to use selection color. I'm just going to change the black into the blue. As you can see, there's two duplicates of blue. So it doesn't merge them together until you unselect them and reselect them. And now it's joined together. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two about creating buttons, either using frames or order layouts, but also how you can quickly style them with color. That's all I have for now. I will make two more videos on buttons. The first one, how to swap icons in these buttons. And the second one, how to set up button states. I might create additional button videos in the future, but that's probably enough button videos for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.